Live from Mountain View, California, it's The Q at OpenStack Silicon Valley, brought to you by headline sponsor, Mirantis. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Frick. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Silicon Valley. This is OpenStack SV. This is theCUBE, where we go out to the events and start to see the noise. I'm joined my co-host Jeff Frick uh, with SiliconANGLE. Our next guest is Harshal Pimpal. Pimpal Kunde. I get so good. <laughs> you almost I, got it. I almost got it. I was too busy tweeting. I couldn't memorize it fast enough. Uh, yeah, we're senior product marketing manager, A10 Networks. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. All right, so uh, first time on theCUBE, so it's pretty straightforward. We're going to ask you all the toughest questions. We're going to make you sweat now. Only kidding. <laughs> all right. Um, share with the folks out there quick A10, the update, um, people who might not uh, know about you guys, who you guys are, value proposition, why you're here. Sure, uh, and, and thank you for having me, uh, John and Jeff. Uh, Aten Networks is a, is a leader in application networking, and we provide uh, products and solutions uh, for application performance, application security, and availability. So uh, uh, we have products in uh, both the hardware form factor as well as virtual appliance form factor. And, and what we are trying to do is sitting between the application and the network, we want to provide policy enforcement, a consistent policy enforcement as workloads move between data center uh, or within data center and across cloud domains. So that's, that's really what we are bringing to the table. So to basically to deliver what the app needs, when the app needs, based on some rules. Exactly, yes. Okay. So the networking landscape is um, littered with a lot of startups that didn't make it, some did. I mean, we were talking to uh, you know, the folks at Cisco, Juniper, and Juniper's a little bit struggling now, but the network landscape was north, south, east, west, as north, south, east, west now, and you got virtualization. Yes. So talk about what's changed. Certainly north, south, everyone understands the old school networking. Yes. And how do you guys fit into this massive shift? Dockerization just got 40 million in series yeah. seed funding. This is about distributed computing. How does the networks fit into that's, that? That's a, that's a great question, yeah. So if you, if you look at the last five to seven years, you have had uh, a, a tremendous shift in, term of, in terms of traffic patterns. Right, you had the north-south traffic pattern traditionally and, and we had the three-tier data center to address that. As, as we move towards virtualization, there's, there's more uh, workload mobility and, and there's more uh, east-west traffic really essentially uh, coming out of, out of this kind of, uh, uh, of uh, workload mobility and, and, and applications, right? So as far as ADCs are concerned, uh, it, is, it is the onus on an application delivery controller to provide the policy as the workload moves within the data center. So, to give you an example, uh, let's say you had, a, you had a virtual machine providing a certain application or a certain uh, component of the application, whether it's a web, web tier, database tier, or, or, or uh, really the presentation tier, sitting in, in, on one bare metal server or virtualized, virtualized server. As that workload moves to a different part of the, of the data center, perhaps on a different server, uh, the policies related to security, so let's say the web application firewall, um, uh, policies related to availability, uh, let's say uh, the load balancing that occurs uh, across the different compute nodes have to move with that workload. So as, as, it, as it relates to ADCs, uh, we still have to provide all the great performance that we always did, but now in addition we have to provide the flexibility of moving around as the application evolves, as the architecture evolves inside the data center. So on the, um, the VM world, we were talking about this as well. They're embracing OpenStack and Docker. How does that affect your business, the VMs of the world, VMwares of the world, Cisco might have a different approach. There seems to be a different approach to networking. Yes. What's your answer to that? Yes, so uh, our response to that is, is the world is definitely changing, and, and it is changing on the SDN side for sure, like, like you touched upon VMware, you touched upon Cisco, and, and, and there are new uh, SDN paradigms. Each one is coming from their own position. Uh, we have the cloud orchestration platform, uh, for, for, for example, OpenStack being one of the key ones that we are focused on. And, and as each of these SDN or cl cloud orchestration pieces evolve, it is really the responsibility for us to integrate with all of them. And, and what we can do from our vantage point of view is provide a operating system on our application delivery controllers such that we can easily provide or quickly provide 
uh, the policy enforcement that is necessary in any of the evolving architecture. So it's a, it's a dynamically changing world. There are uh, emerging cloud frameworks and it's our responsibility to uh, integrate. So if I understand you correctly, basically you're a DevOps dream from a networking <laughs> standpoint. Because DevOps, they, don't, they want to program down yeah. into a dynamic resource pool. Yes. No matter what that is. So policies being set at the application layer. Exactly. So, why is that important? What does your um, ASOS, Advanced Core Operating System, and do to enable that, and why is policy in the cloud important? Right, so, so I'm glad you touched upon it. So uh, yes, we are a DevOps stream, but I, I just want to highlight that we are, uh, we, the, the value that ACOS brings, our Advanced Core Operating System brings, also provides uh, rapid third party integration. So let me first focus on, on the uh, DevOps piece. Uh, programmability is important in, in the do-it-yourself camp on the DIY, um, wherein you need APIs to connect with the networking device, whether it's L2, L3 device or an L4, L7 device, you need APIs to connect to the device, make sure that your application or, or whatever code you're writing runs on top of that, or runs with, uh, integrates with it, really. In our latest release of software, we are coming up with uh, deep integration uh, uh, capabilities. So we have really a single source of truth that allows you to get auto-generated GUIs, auto-generated CLI, auto-generated APIs. So once you have auto-generated APIs, what that means is you have 100% consistency day one. So you have uh, the functionality on the CLI as well as the API on the same day. So all, all the DIY camp, all the DevOps camp can use that to, uh, to write their own code on top of it. But, but we also have uh, uh, auto-generated GUI. So you, you can, if you are a third party integration, you can cut down six months on your development time to integrate your homegrown application on, on top of uh, our ACOS platform. So that's how we view the DIY and the third party integration uh, worlds. Talk about the customers. Which in OpenStack specifically, what is the customer perspective? So uh, it's, it's interesting. I, I was at OpenStack Atlanta uh, earlier this year, and, and uh, it, it, I was impressed with uh, the, the turnout over there, uh, both in terms of customers as well as vendors. Um, I think this year has been a, a, a pivotal point in, in terms of um, customer, uh, the, the necessary mind share, or, or the tipping point, if you may, uh, in, in gaining the uh, critical mass as uh, customers take this uh, uh, from a real deployment perspective point of view. So, so, so for example, we have um, uh, Deutsche Telekom, uh, who has used OpenStack, uh, along with the ATEN networks of virtual appliances uh, to, uh, for the CGN solution. We have several uh, conversations uh, with customers, uh, now more so than before, uh, now more so in 2014 than, than, than before, where they are actually asking for use cases, uh, trying to figure out how OpenStack fits into their, uh, uh, their vision. Um, so NetNet, I think, uh, customers are looking at it seriously from a deployment perspective, uh, and it's, it's both uh, the large customers, the large service providers, large enterprises, also the medium-sized enterprises for who uh, the, the total cost of ownership is, is really feasible with, with OpenStack. And how mature is that, is that Deutsche Telekom project? So, Deutsche Telekom, you can, uh, uh, it's, it, it's a pilot project on TerraStream, which okay. is the next generation uh, uh, all optical, all IPv6 network. Um, we have it on our website, I encourage you to review it, uh, but, but it's, it's really interesting how they've uh, deployed the IP, uh, they've deployed the, uh, the uh, virtual appliances by ATEN networks uh, to provide IPv4 as a service. And really, uh, that allows them to consume IPv4 as a service uh, on a need base uh, in, in the OpenStack environment. So talk about the uh, traction you guys have. When I was talking with Jason uh, Matloff, your uh, VP of Marketing, mm -hmm. he was saying you guys are killing it with customers. Is that true? Yes, uh, certainly. So if you're, you're killing customers, <laughs> no, killing it. No, but talk about it, a customer. We're, we're success killing the story. problems with the customers. Yeah, yeah. 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 Kill, <laughs> killing it in a you know in a positive uh, way. Uh, in a yeah, positive way. Killing yes. it as in doing well. Talk about so a quick before we break here. I want to hear a customer success story mm -hmm. that really highlights your value proposition. Sure. So if you if you look at our customer base, we are uh, approximately around 3,300 customers, and these are across 27 countries, uh, and and we have uh, customers in almost every uh, major domain. So we have customers on the service provider side. We have large enterprises, uh, and and uh, customers really on, in the web 2.0 giants as, as well. 
Uh, the one thing that resonates frequently with our customers is the price performance. So if you, if you look at uh, uh, our, our customer base, they're, they're taking our appliances and, and using it from, uh, from a performance perspective uh, and, and, and throwing uh, difficult traffic in, in, in the direction of, of uh, the box so that their business needs are met uh, from an availability perspective, from a security perspective, from a performance perspective. Um, that's, that's speaking generally. Uh, I, I refer to the Deutsche Telekom uh, uh, case. It's, it's an all, opti all optical IPv6 next generation network. And uh, that's, that's really uh, how we view our customers are going to take this forward as they deploy next generation networks, as they deploy next generation data centers. Certainly the game is changing significantly. Next generation networks really is software driven, software led mm -hmm. infrastructure, whole new ball game, it's exciting. Of course we've been documenting it from day one uh, with our Wikibon analysts and obviously cloud mobile and social here at SiliconANGLE and theCUBE. Um, Harshal, thank you for coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate it, sharing thank your you insight. A10 Networks here at the OpenStack SV. Go to our crowdchat.net slash OpenStack SV if you want to join the conversation. We'll be right back after this short break.